Today we're talking about alarm terminology. Let's say you just got a new alarm system or you just got a new position in which you are supposed to be controlling or administrating the new alarm system. You might not know what all these bells and whistles are. You might not know what all these pieces are and what they do. Um, if you ever want to try to read up on these systems or if you ever need to ask for help on a system, you, you'll be able to understand what all the pieces are, you'll be able to describe accurately what your problem is, and you'll be able to understand what the solution might be. So let's get started. So the first thing you're probably gonna encounter is this is a keypad. The keypad is the way you communicate with your alarm system. The keypad is not the alarm system itself. If you destroy the keypad, the alarm system will continue to function. You might have lots of keypads. You might have one keypad. The keypad is just the way for you to interact with your alarm system. Think of it as the screen and the keyboard and the mouse of your alarm system. You're going to have sensors. Sensors are things that tell the alarm system if somebody is trying to enter a protected zone or not. Okay, you might have a little magnet on a door. You might have a motion detector mounted to cover a large space. You might have an environmental sensor to see if uh, temperature is too low or too high, say inside of uh, a refrigerated unit. You might have uh, some exotic sensors like seismic detectors. We use those to protect vaults, ATMs, and safes. But all your alarm devices are technically sensors. All sensors are connected to a point. Typically, in a modern security system, a point is assigned to a sensor. So every sensor will have its own point. So if you go to your keypad and it says point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, you'll know that it's referring to a specific sensor. Typically speaking, every sensor will be assigned to its own point. Door 1 might be point 0.1, door 2 might be point 0.2, motion detector number 3 might be uh, on point number 3. So you have to look at your keypad and that will tell you what's going on with your alarm system. You might have a very simple alarm keypad that has a single uh, line display that will only tell you a point number. You might have a very complex keypad with a graphic display that'll give you lots of information on your point. Or you might have a two line keypad that'll just tell you the point number and a point description. But knowing what point is causing the trouble is the first step towards solving the problem. You might want to group lots of points together. For example, if you have lots of different buildings or lots of different spaces within a building and you want to be able to control all those spaces independently. One way of doing that is to have lots of different alarms for every separate location. For example, you could have one alarm for just the offices, another alarm for just the refrigerators, a third alarm for just the warehouse, or you can have one alarm and you can put all of those points together in a logical fashion. Each group of points is called an area. Having lots of areas allows you to uh, turn on and off each area. So if you want to have people in the warehouse moving around, changing stock, but you don't want to have anybody in the shop floor, you can turn off the area in the warehouse, but turn on the area on the shop floor. The way you have your areas set up will be dictated by your operations. So if you want to have uh, different groups, uh, a different grouping of areas, you would want to speak to your security integrator and have them change that around. It does take a service call, it does take a technician to come down to reprogram the system, but always remember that if your operation changes, your security system can change as well. 
If an alarm sensor detects a state of movement or intrusion, it will send a message to your alarm keypad. We call that state of fault. If the door is open, the magnetic contacts that are connected to the door are pulled apart and we call that a fault. So we'll say that the point on that door is faulted. If there's somebody walking around in front of a motion detector, the motion detector will send a signal to the alarm system saying that there is somebody moving around and we'll get a message on our keypad saying that that motion detector is faulted. So if your system is faulted, you will not be able to turn the system on. If your system is faulted, even though it looks like it should not be faulted, then you have a problem and you need to contact your integrator and tell them that the point is faulted, even though it does not look faulted. This could indicate a problem with the wire, it could indicate a problem with the sensor, it might even indicate a problem with the alarm system. But knowing when a sensor is faulted and knowing when a sensor should be faulted is the first step towards troubleshooting your own alarm system. If you have a faulted sensor that is that looks like it shouldn't be faulted and you want to be able to turn the rest of the system on, you can temporarily bypass that sensor. Bypassing just means that the alarm system is going to ignore that particular sensor. You should not use this on a permanent basis though. You should always know when a sensor is bypassed because if the sensor is bypassed, that means that one particular sensor is unprotected. Your alarm is constantly looking at signals from sensors and then deciding what to do about them. If your alarm is in an active state, it will respond to those sensors by sending a signal to somewhere or turning on a siren or something else. If your alarm is in an inactive state, it won't do any of that. It'll just send messages to the keypad. The active state is called armed. The inactive state is called disarmed. When you leave for the night and you want to make sure your alarm is functioning and ready to protect your facility, you would arm the alarm and then you would leave. When you came back in the morning, you wanted to be able to come into your facility and walk around in it, you would disarm the alarm. If you ever have to troubleshoot your system, your integrator might ask you to arm or disarm the alarm. They're asking you to change it from an inactive state to an active state or from an active state to an inactive state in order to help them troubleshoot. The third state is called test mode. That's when the alarm will send a signal, but the people receiving the signal will know not to dispatch the police. Sometimes the integrator will ask you to put it into test mode in order to be able to check a sensor or check a siren remotely. That way you can arm a system and have it go off without having the police responding to the alarm. We hope this has been helpful. Thanks so much for joining us.